Summer 2021 is a very interesting time for anime. If you compare this season to the last, you could say that spring is the obvious winner. With big titles and a plethora of sleeper hits, it's pretty likely to assume some of us may skip more anime this summer season, just so we can catch up on everything we missed in the last season. Some of these anime being, but not limited to, 86, Haiji Hero, To Your Eternity, Vivi, Odd Taxi, and Zombieland Saga. All top tier shows I'm told, but even I was having trouble keeping up with everything last season. I haven't seen Odd Taxi or Vivi yet, but I do plan on changing that in the near future, which could drastically lower what I'm watching this season. So taking everything into account from the last season, how does Summer 2021 compare? Well, honestly, it's looking pretty good. Right now, we may not be able to tell what's going to stand above the rest, or what gives this season an edge over the last one or the last couple, but either way, I'm interested to find out. This time around, I'm doing something a little different. I don't tend to do video essays, however, I feel as if now may be the time to start. I'm watching more anime than ever in my own time, and so I feel like I should share what I'm watching or planning on picking up this season. If you're subscribed to my channel, which by the way, you totally should be, you'd know I'm currently reacting to five different anime. I'm standing on a million lives season two, maybe it's season one, not quite sure. <laughs> Tokyo Avengers, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, season two, part two, the detective is already dead, and Peach Boy Riverside. Now, if you know Notice the pattern with these, you'd be right. Three out of five of them are continuations of already established shows, all of which I'm excited for, but they don't give a great example of the current anime season. This video I'll try to focus on new anime instead of older ones. You probably already have an idea of reoccurring anime that you want to watch, so I'll hold off on them for now. Getting into the new stuff, let's have a look at The Detective Is Already Dead. This show is about the best detective in the world. Or it would be, but you know, the title gives away the major aspect of this story. Instead we follow Watson, not his real name, mind you, but the name that Siesta gave him. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble, so much so the local police know him by name. Seemingly this was the main reason why she wanted him to be her sidekick. If trouble was always around him, then she would have something to solve. Fast forward a couple of years and one episode, this duo has already gone through a multitude of adventures and cases, seemingly being the downfall of the detective. As of writing this script, I've only seen the first two episodes, where the twist of the story starts. I won't spoil it, but as interesting as a concept as it is, it was kind of obvious to figure out given the course of the second episode. I am interested in where the show goes, so I do look forward to the rest of the season. And no, I'm not just watching this because of the Hololive cameos that are going to happen in episode 3. However, I would be lying if I said I wasn't excited about it. Moving on, we have the potential clusterfuck of Peach Boy Riverside. On the surface, it's your average power anime, with the protagonist is far more powerful and can easily win any fight, even if they may not be fully in control while doing it. Now, this isn't me dragging on the show, it does what it needs to. And from what I've seen so far, has decent animations and a decent cast of characters. A demi-human that gets discriminated against based on her race. An ogre which lost her powers, basically making her a human. And a once city guard that sees the best in people despite what they may be doing. And the overpowered hottie with a body when things start to go down you may want to give some distance to. <laughs> Remember kids, don't put your dick in crazy. These alone are fine and the basic plot of ogres versus humans in a world where they are mortal enemies is okay and all, but what really may make or break this show is gonna come from the episodes themselves. You see, the anime itself is airing out of order. The first two episodes you may not be able to notice, because it just it does drop you right into the action, but a lot of anime do that nowadays. But in the third episode, it's very apparent. At the end of the second episode, which I won't spoil it for, there was a huge thing that happened, and then seemingly in episode three, it's a huge time skip. A multitude of new characters appear, not really getting an introduction. We're now in a completely different setting, and we don't know what's going on. Even in my reaction when I was watching it blind and before I knew this, I felt like this was one of the final episodes of the show. And I was right. Chronologically, this would have been episode 11 of the series, but it came out as episode 3. And now apparently the director of the show decided that they wanted to air it out of order, so not chronologically, compared to the manga, which doesn't do this. A, because the manga wasn't finished yet, and they felt like this would be the better option for the show itself. We have yet to see if that's going to actually matter for the show, but as of right now, it's honestly just kind of confusing. I did like the fights, I did like the characters, and I'm excited to see where the rest of the show goes, but we won't really know what becomes of it until the final episode. And this may be one of those where you have to watch it out of airing order to actually make it make sense, but we'll see. And these two shows are just the ones that I'm reacting to on this channel. We still have plenty to go over, so let's continue from here. If you only allow yourself one isekai to get into per season, this could be a difficult choice for you. 
or could potentially be a really easy one. On all the new isekai, there aren't many that really stand out. Based on the description, and I'm sorry for any pronunciations I do terribly, Sirai Gensoki brings up an interesting concept of reincarnation into someone else. A boy with two memories, one of himself and one of his past life. A concept I've always been a little bit curious about, but I've never really seen implemented into any isekai at least. Drugstore into another world is less of an isekai and more of a fantasy slice of life through an alchemist. Yes, the main character Reiji Kirio was a reincarnation, but that really doesn't seem important to the plot at all. He was isekai'd into this world with skills that make making drugs and medicines and things like that fairly easily, so he becomes the town alchemist. He brings things such as soap, uh, dish detergent, energy drinks into this fantasy world that they just don't have. It's an interesting concept, but if you're looking for some sort of power fantasy, this is not for you. It's, it's definitely a slice of life. Other such isekai would be like the Dungeon of Black Company, being about a lazy zero work ethic person thrown into a world under slavery, and how a realist hero rebuilds the kingdom. He solves a medieval kingdom's problems with paperwork and accounting. Although out of all of these isekai, the one that stands out to me the most, of the new ones at least, is Tsukumishi Moonlight Fantasy. Makoto Misumi is transported to another world to become a hero because of a deal his parents once, once isekai protagonists themselves, but decided to settle for a normal life and have a couple of kids. Well, this new hero ship goes pretty poorly for him. The, the goddess in her vanity tosses Makoto to the edge of the world purely because she sees him as ugly and no real other reason than that. She gives him her worst blessing she can possibly give, which is to speak every language, which honestly isn't really that bad. It's pretty good, but I guess that's not the point. <laughs> Fortunately for him, since he lived on Earth, it was basically like power training for this planet, giving him superhuman abilities. Think planet Vegeta to Earth. The first two episodes being pretty well written and animated gives me hope for what's to come. I'm not really sure if it's going to be some sort of a revenge story, but either way, I'm excited for him to become more powerful and rejoin the actual world. And let's see what goes from there. Now let's talk about a few anime that I haven't seen yet, but I'm still excited to start. If you could go back and relive your life, what changes would you make? I myself have thought about this plenty of times. Would I not change schools? Would I ask that girl out? Would I have gone? Would I have not gone to college? Remake Our Life seems to answer some of these questions. Hishiba Koyoya, sorry if I mispronounced that, ends up traveling back in time 10 years into the past and is given the opportunity to restart. Him going into a better college and being surrounded by people that will one day become some of the greats of his time. He can now make decisions to change his life for the better and I'm very curious to see where this show goes and what it's, what it's going to become. I haven't seen it quite yet, like I said earlier, but just the description and title alone make me really interested. Kanajo Mo Kanajo may be what all degenerates dream of in their lives, but isn't really ideal or realistic when you think about it. It's interesting. It's a romantic comedy harem where the protagonist actually gets the girl, but not just one of them. He gets permission from his girlfriend to, well, have another girlfriend. Now this concept isn't necessarily groundbreaking, and it's really just a young boy's fantasy, but I'm curious to see how the show goes and if it, how it progresses. Now I could go on for hours about all the anime coming up this season, the good and the potentially very bad, but I'll let you guys decide on which ones you think are worth watching this season. And if you think I clearly missed anything, uh, you can go into the comments down below and let me know how I'm a complete idiot for missing the most obvious best anime of the year. And I'll make sure I eat my words later down the line. <laughs> I've been Andrew, and thank you for coming to the party. So this is something kind of different for this channel. I've never really done video essays before. Uh, I would love some feedback from everyone. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, and if you want more similar con- similar? <laughs> if you want more similar content, let me know. Uh, go into the comments and I'll probably basically read everything. But uh, thank you guys and see you in the next one.